I have an interesting scientific fact, and it's gonna blow your mind, okay? I've got my notes, because I don't memorize every little thing, and I wanna get it right for you. The heart, our heart, is an electrical organ using rhythmic bioelectricity. Now, I know you're gonna say, oh, I already know that, but listen to this, because I'm gonna put it in such a way that it, it will blow your mind, okay? And then we'll talk about the implications of it. This energy goes to every cell in your body. It's, an electric, it's a, the electric impulses it's creating. That's why they have pacemakers and things like that when the electricity isn't working as well. Now, this energy creates an energy field surrounding every one of us, our bodies in a 360 field around us, extending beyond the skin and out into space. It is measurable, and so I don't know, but they're measuring it at about three feet outside of our body. Wow. I mean, I know we've seen visions of this, but I want you to really, really like get it. Like this is crazy, okay? Now, our heart, so our heart radiates out of us. This, what do I, what do I have there? This is known as, okay, yeah. This is known as, this one we're talking about. This is known as good vibes or bad vibes because this is our energy field. We can already feel this as our sixth sense with other people, because we're gonna be feeling there, we're gonna be walking into their fields, not only sensing it, but we're gonna be walking through their energy fields of three feet out. We are immersed, our bodies are immersed in a 360 bubble and talk to other people's 360 bubbles. This is that sixth sense. Have you ever felt that? I have, let's talk about this. It matters if you're positive or you're negative, okay? Because it creates interactions with reality and events. So it really does matter whether at, the, at this point in time, if you're positive or negative in your in your in your field energy field now these are findings over a 30 year study these aren't new findings but they are elaborating on it just a little bit more it is utterly it, it blows my mind how about you did it blow your mind <laughs> yeah blow your mind well let's have a little cup of coffee here and um together and let's talk about this good coffee. I got this down in the lobby. Obviously, I'll talk about this place too and what happened, but I really want to discuss this. Now, how many times I was walking down the hall this morning and I was thinking, you know, and the halls aren't that wide. So maybe three feet wide. So we're obviously walking when we're walking past each other, our bubbles are following each other and we can feel each other. We're talking to each other. What happens if you're in a big crowd, like you're in a concert or in your big crowd? Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, you can feel and you can talk to each other through sixth sense of, of, of our energy. What is our energy? I, I mean, how many times have we walked past somebody and we feel kind of, ooh, you know? Because we're sensing their energy field. We're sensing their vibrations whether they're good people or bad people. I mean, we can get fooled, but if we really were listening, I'm gonna guess that a lot of us feel and sense that this is not good, but our brain, our brain says, oh, you know, they're okay, they're okay, you know, don't, yeah. So, but maybe they're really, they're not okay. Like, what if they were like a serial killer or something like that? Are we gonna, are we gonna sense that? I bet in many ways, of course, we're going to sense that, but we may throw it out and say, oh, well, don't, in our minds, we think, well, don't be so rude. Don't be so judgmental, you know, but really our bubbles are telling us 
what we should what we should uh, feel and not feel and um so anyways yeah as far as when it said this really got me when it says it matters if you are positive or negative because it creates the um interactions with reality and events now are we always every minute and every day going to be miss positive all the time mr positive well, probably not, because what if we didn't sleep well that night? What if we just don't feel well? Boy, don't I know that. And and yeah, we're going to be grumpy or we're just, we're not going to have hardly any energy at all. Well, this will interact with reality. This will interact with certain events that really can alter your life. So what I'm saying is it probably is a good idea to be positive the best you can be. That means get your sleep. Don't take sleep aids either. I've been reading about those and what they're doing is they're almost putting you in a coma at night and you're not really, your brain isn't really working well and you're going to wake up feeling more tired anyways, but that's another, that's for another day. Okay. Um, and I want you to eat well. Um, take care of yourself, get your exercise and your walking, whatever that is. Um, boy, don't I need that right now. And so try to be as positive as you possibly can as often as you can. I did. Here's another thing too. I want to talk about. I did. Well, let me find this. Um, oh yeah. I saw this other information. And, and, you know, on yesterday's or the two days ago, the video, please, would you please rewatch that a couple times and share it? I really would like to get that out there. I think it's a good video and I'd really like to get as many views as I can. For some reason, um, uh, Google or YouTube doesn't doesn't put my videos out like like some other people's videos. So I need your help. I need those fingers to go out. Can you share that video? The one about my broken heart uh, six months ago. But, you know, some of you actually said, I mean, I loved your comments. Mm, I love that you watched it in your comments. Watch it again for me. Um, you said, and a lot of people say this, love isn't something you feel. It's something you do. Okay. But this message went even further. Love isn't something you do. It's something you become. How many, I mean, we all know that the phrase, I mean, God is love. He is. Well, I think we're supposed to be too. So it is something that we become. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. And another thing too, another thought. And this goes with the blow your mind thing with the heart, you know, the electrical, um, or it's an electrical organ. It's creating electricity that's, going through our body and extending outward. Here's a question. Is your life in pursuit of happiness or is your life an expression of joy? And I believe that the latter is what our real goal is, is to be, um, we are an exp our life is an expression of our joy. And the example that they gave was like, okay, well, I'm going to, I see that tree over there and I'm going to sit under that tree and I am going to try to wring out some joy out of how I feel about that tree. But that's kind of, and, and it goes with like loving somebody with the relationship thing. Yes, I want to be with that person and I'm going to try to get as much joy and I'm going to wring out some joy, wring out some happiness from this person or that tree or that sunset out there. Yeah, but really, you can't do that. It's We have to be unto ourselves. Our whole life needs to be an expression of joy. Is that going to be every second? Well, I think it could be if we really are conscious of it, I think that's a real goal, isn't it? But doesn't that go along with the blow your mind thing of our, our bubble, our field out here, our good vibes field, 
or bad vibes feel. If our life is an expression of joy, wow, that bubble, that bubble is going to, people are going to react to that energy coming from you. And one thing that I did notice, I'm like, wow, because I'm, I'm happy to be here and I feel a true, um, I th do feel right now my life is an expression of joy right at this moment with what's going on. And as I'm walking down the hall, I mean, there are, and this is a very nice hotel, there are a lot of workers here, a lot of them. And they're dressed really nice and really nice gals and, and men too. And they just smile at me. I mean, they smile at me first and I'm like, and when I saw this about the bubble, I thought, wow, I'll bet that my bubble is radiating out some really good vibes. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Isn't that something? I love it. Coffee. Mm. It's, when I'm very ill, coffee does not taste good. I just am now getting the taste back. Okay, so where am I? Well, I would let you know where I am, but you know, I just don't want to reveal where I'm at. Um, but I'm in a very nice hotel and I did get a good price, but I've stayed here before. And I'll tell you what, this is one, this is a nice one. Um, it's not huge, but it, everything seems to be, it's, it's a Hilton. Everything seems to be a little bit above, one step above, yeah. So down in the lobby, there's coffee down there and there's tea. They have a wonderful breakfast. And what I've been doing is going down a couple of times and bringing some food back in. So it's in my refrigerator so I don't have to go out and buy food. I couldn't, I couldn't have made it to the store anyways. So am I feeling better? Let's talk about my health, okay? Because I know you were all concerned about it. This is the first I put on makeup. I did, I get all gussied up for you. What do you think, huh? <laughs> <coughs> Still got a little bit of cough. I've got this little gadget here that seems to be kind of helping. The problem is you really want to get all your air out and then you really want to get a big puff of it, but my bronchial tubes are constricted. So sometimes I have to do it a couple times. And they got me, um, I only have one more day of antibiotics um, because it's not a bacterial bronchitis. Um, this one is virus, from a virus, it has to run its course. So, you know, I mean, it's not like I haven't been in the gym in how long now? Oh my gosh, because I was in Ohio. I only went back and I barely um, spent much time there for maybe two days and then I start feeling ill again. So it's been a while and I'm not even gonna worry about it. I don't really care. Um, when I feel completely healed, I'll start thinking about it again. But for now, I don't really care. Yeah, um, right now my health is very important and I think yours too. Now, a lot of you are telling me that you are going through, there's a lot of this going around. There's a bronchitis going around. So yeah, um, I caught it. You know, I get sick so rare. Oh my gosh, it is so rare when I feel bad. But it seems like in my life, when I do, I go pew. I mean, I'm, I get serious stuff. I had spinal meningitis once when my oldest daughter was a, who gets spinal meningitis and lives through it? But I did. And my daughter didn't get it. Uh, my husband did get it. But my daughter never got it. And that could have been devastating for her. So somebody was really watching out for her. I've had the weirdest things. When I get sick, I get really, I fall. But I rarely get just, oh, I got a cold. Or no, I don't feel good. Or yeah, no. I rarely get those things, but when I fall, man, I'm like, pew, pew. yeah, yeah. So I hope this is the only thing for at least two, three years now again. So great, okay. Well, the hospital was a trip and I do want to do a shout out to somebody who <laughs> I do, I do want to do a shout out to. Oh, did I not write his name down? Oh my gosh. Dan LaFleur. Yeah. Is it Dan? Let me check. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah. Here, I'll get it right here. Dan LaFleur, yeah. He got sick too. He had to go in. He went um, in an ambulance. He went in an ambulance. And I'll tell you what, so did I. I did not want to walk in. And I mean, I'll be paying that price coming down. But I, I did not want to. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even walk. So, and it was the middle of the night, my daughter was half asleep. So what I did was I did get in my car and I drove to my, to my son's house. And he, uh, he just woke up and I just said, I'm going to call an ambulance because otherwise I'm going to have to walk in and park. I don't, I don't even know where to park anymore. They've changed the whole thing. It's gotten bigger and, and, um, and I can't breathe. I think, I think I do require some uh, an ambulance to get me there, because I can't breathe, and um, I didn't want to just sit in in a room waiting. I wanted to go right into the emergency room and get some ble breathing treatment. So, anyways, but he said that he was in his ambulance too, and this first time I was like, okay, yeah. Well, we shared that experience. I was there a very long time. They're just busy. I was forgotten. You know how it goes. I'm not going to complain. But I was forgotten after a while. You know, they did um, chest x-ray. Fine. They did the CAT scan. No, they thought maybe I had because I flew an ambul embolism. No, I'm fine on that. But I wasn't getting enough oxygen. That was obvious. I mean, my oxygen, the numbers were low. Because I'm like, um, I, at that point, if I even moved around or picked up something, I was like, <gasps> yeah, I couldn't even move. And um, so they had me on oxygen and they had fluids going through me because I, I hadn't eaten in like three days and I hadn't, um, it was hard to drink too. I don't know, I just kind of forgot. I guess because I wasn't getting enough oxygen. But I do think that that video I put out Easter, right before I went pew and I fell, that was a good video. That was a good video. So maybe I do my best work when I'm coming down with something, you think? Okay. <laughs> well, what else do I have to say? Um, I'm gonna be here for um, three more days. Yes, this is expensive and it's like a vacation. I'm looking at it like that way because <clears throat> there is no way that I can just be in my van. And so we'll probably soon need to talk about that what happens when it gets really serious couple remarks i want to make about the video on relationships the last video before this one now a lot of you had mentioned that you were glad that i decided to go solo i do want to reiterate on that that i am a commitment girl and i was ready for the commitment so being solo is something that I'm, I'm doing and, and I'm very adaptable. I'm a flexible person. I'm very flexible, okay? But I was ready to be in a committed relationship and I was in love. So that's where that's where the, the heartache came from because it's like, no, I was ready. I'm not. And so one of the reasons I'm doing so much research is because I really would like to. And I'm not putting out applications or anything because I would never even think about a relationship at, at least till after a year. Um, it's only been six months, but no, I'd love to be in a relationship. Now, some of you said, well, I don't know why women think they need to be in a relationship. I, I, don't, I don't think they do. I think women are pretty much happy being solo. I really do. I did see this one, um, uh, Thing that somebody said, I forget what you'd even call it, but he said, men always thought that they were competing against the top 10% of all men. That's what everybody was competing against, but not, not so. What they're competing against now is the freedom and peace that women feel being alone and not having to go through the heartache of relationships. So that's something to think about. Women are opting out of relationships so they can have some peace in their lives because it's not always easy.
to be in the relationships. Am I happy to just opt out of it? I think I would like to find somebody to be in a relationship with, a healthy relationship with somebody emotionally healthy and that we could offer a time. And so in, in the coming couple of videos, I wanna talk about this because it's getting to the point and Max and I talk about this a lot. Look, we're all getting older, so you know where you know where I'm going with this. Just sitting there, oh, I don't need anybody, I don't need anybody, I don't need, uh, au contraire. A lot of us are nomads. And even if you're living in a house, I mean, you need people around you and it might mean you need a partner, somebody who's there just for you and you can love each other. So with that said, I am going to stop this. Thank you for spending 20 minutes with me. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being patient with me. And this isn't hurting me doing this at all. This isn't hurting me. Um, this is what I love to do, you know. Okay, so I love you guys. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. And please, I ask you, the one thing I ask for you now is if, if you want to give me a gift, and some of you have been giving me gifts, oh my gosh, because I've really been spending and not earning right now. So if you want to give me a gift, go on minivanlee.com. It's right there. I don't do Zelle or anything like that. So one of you kept saying, well, what's your note? Well, I don't do Zelle. I don't want to give my bank information. No. But if you go to minivanlee.com, it's a secure. It's just like using Amazon. So it's using the same company that works with Amazon if you use your card so yeah okay so with that said i'm gonna see you tomorrow i know i am i love you bye <laughs>